Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to introduce you to the OpenMV Cam H7 Plus. The OpenMV Cam is a small sized, low power microcontroller that allows you to implement machine vision into your projects. We're going to take a look at what comes on the board. We're also going to take a look at the accessories you can buy for this camera. I'm going to show you how to download the OpenMV IDE. And in there, we're going to take a look at the libraries and the wide range of examples that it gives you right out of the box. So if you're saying, well, I'm a beginner, I don't really have time to learn how to use this, I'm going to show you how easy it is to load one of those examples right onto your board and get started right away. I've had a lot of fun with this, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it too. Let's get started. The H7 Plus has the ARM Cortex-M7 processor running at 480 megahertz with 32 megabytes of SD RAM plus one megabyte of SRAM and 32 megabytes of external flash plus two megabytes of internal flash. All the input output pins output 3.3 volt and are five volt tolerant. On the board itself, you're gonna see a micro SD slot. SD stands for Secure Digital Memory Card. It supports up to a two gigabyte SD card if you're using the high capacity SDHC card, it supports up to 32 gigabyte size. If you're using the SDXC, which is the extended capacity, it supports up to a two terabyte size card. In this video, I'm using a 64 gigabyte SDXC card and it allows for plenty of storage and I have no complaints. It has a spy bus that can run up to 80 megabits per second, allowing you to easily stream image data to your LCD shield. Here's the pinout for this camera. It can easily connect to other single board computers such as Raspberry Pi and microcontrollers such as Arduino over UART, I2C, SPI, and CAN communication protocols. I purchased a 3.7 volt, 1500 milliamp hour lithium polymer rechargeable battery, but the thing you wanna watch out for is how the connector is attached to the end of your wires. For this to work with your camera, you need the positive wire on the left. It's connected backwards, so I'll be connecting my micro USB to power this camera until I can fix it myself. Here we're at the OpenMV website. If you go up here and click on products, you can take a look at some of the cameras that they sell. The H7 Plus is the newest camera and uh, they have a number of older uh, versions here. Uh, down here we have the camera modules that you can upgrade your cameras to. This module right here is basically the same one it gives the same resolution and images that you would get in the one that came with the H7 Plus, it appears. And uh, this one right here is a FLIR adapter module. That would be for thermal imaging. And this one right here is the one I would consider getting as a future upgrade. This is the global shutter uh, camera module. And it does offer better resolution, uh, as it appears, and a nice uh, boost in frame rate as well. Now we go back up to the product tab here. We can click on shields. There's a number of shields you can purchase for this. I have the LCD shield and the this, this shield is really nice to visually see what your camera is looking at. If it's not connected to the computer, that's what I use it for. The resolution isn't that great, but at least you know what you're looking at. And uh, there's a prototype shield. There's a Wi-Fi shield, a pan tilt shield, a servo shield, and a can shield. You can also uh, purchase a motor shield, a TV shield, a light shield with all these LEDs on it as you can see here and then a wireless TV shield which sounds pretty fun and then this uh, thermopile shield it appears that they don't sell that anymore and if we go back up to the products tab we can click on lenses there's a number of different lenses that you can purchase as well there's an IR lens, a telephoto lens and a super telephoto lens which they just both offer uh, magnification of uh, imaging and this one here is the ultra wide angle lens which is the one I would consider purchasing with the the global shutter uh, module that you can upgrade your your board to and then down here we have the polarizing filter and a uh, lens mount okay now let's say that we're ready to download the OpenMV IDE we're going to go to the download tab and this is the OpenMV IDE right here IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It's, uh, it, it's a place designed to provide developers with a single environment where they can go and manage their code and develop applications more efficiently. Oftentimes in an IDE you're going to see a code editor, a compiler, a debugger, and other tools for writing and uh, debugging and testing your code. And in this one we see the uh, text editor right here. We see a serial terminal right here. 
and uh, there's a histogram here and a frame buffer here where you'll see the video that uh, is coming from your camera so in order to download that we'll come down here you can download it for Windows Mac OS X you can also download it for Linux as well and even Linux for Raspberry Pi and I don't want to forget the uh, some useful tabs over here the uh, Docs tab here there's a tutorial and the tutorial is very helpful I have not read every bit of it but I've read quite a bit of it and I've skimmed a lot of it and I do it as I have questions but uh, this is very useful you definitely want to check this out too when you get your uh, OpenMV camera okay you've downloaded your OpenMV IDE and you've opened it up and this is what you're going to see over here on the sidebar you're going to see a, um, an option for a new file so you want to uh, start a new program for your camera you click that and it's just going to put an extra tab up here uh, down here you've got your save and your undo your redo your cut and paste up here you've got the file button which you'll use frequently down here is a documents folder here's the examples this is the examples that comes with the software and there are an absolute ton of examples in here some of the applications for the H7 Plus include TensorFlow Lite support, frame differencing, color tracking, marker tracking, face detection, eye tracking, person detection, optical flow, QR code detection and decoding, data matrix detection and decoding, linear barcode decoding, April tag tracking, linear detection, circle detection, rectangle detection, template matching, image capture and video recording. There are a number of examples in the libraries that allow you to expand your camera projects such as the interface library has Arduino examples for I2C, Spy, and UART. There's also a library for the OpenMV boards including examples for all the shields you can buy online. The Wi-Fi shield, the LCD shield, the servo shield, the BLE shield, the distance shield, TV shield, and all the other shields that they sell. There are example codes for the lenses that you can purchase and also examples ready to go for Arduino Nano, uh, Nano 33 BLE Sense, Nikola Vision, and Portentia H7. Uh, down here we have um, a search option and you can search your computer for different file names. Here we have the serial terminal which will give you a, uh, a feed, a real-time feed of the data coming from your camera while it's on. Or if you're having issues with your code, it can help you debug that. It'll uh, give you errors uh, and let you know where the problem is in your code. Up here is the frame buffer where you get your image or your video. And then down here is the histogram. Now I looked up to see why there's a histogram on here. And it really just said that it was eye candy for the IDE. It was empty space that they were looking to fill. But it actually does serve a purpose. It can help identify the quality of light in your shot. Up here with the camera you've got record button, you got the zoom button and disable button. Let's go ahead and connect our camera. We plug in the USB. It's going to a window is going to appear and your camera will appear like a uh, just a thumb drive in your computer where you can see the files that are stored on your on your camera. To connect our camera, we will click on this to connect. We'll go up here to file and we'll pick out an example. We'll do, um, let's do arrow. Arrow and then hit play and you'll see a video pop up right here with a bunch of arrows. Now you can make this bigger. Which is pretty nice. And then here's the uh, light quality I was telling you about. This example shows off drawing arrows on the OpenMV cam. All right? If you want a bunch of arrows. That's just one example here. Now if I wanted to record this, I come up here and click on record. Now it's recording. And then stop. Now I have a video saved to my SD card. And then you can also disable. You can zoom. zoom button and then disable all right that stops your camera so those are some of the features that you'll see just as you open up the software and begin to uh, use it yourself you can mount the LCD shield on the back of your camera 
run the example code for that shield and then view your image or video right off of the display. Here's an example of adding external components to your camera. This is a simple piezo alarm with an external LED. When it identifies something green in the environment, an alarm will go off. When I aim it away and the green disappears, the alarm disappears. To avoid having a really long video, I'm just going to show you some brief clips of examples taken directly from the libraries. It shows you just a little bit of what this camera is capable of. It's definitely not an exhaustive list by any means, but we'll make some more videos and show you what else it can do. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back again very soon.